All right, here's the new range. This is the Samsung induction range. This is the, the um, lowest, the cheapest model of induction range you can buy from Samsung. This is the one with just the single oven and uh, none of the fancy stuff. Some of the more expensive ones have these LED indicator lights on the surface. Got this at Lowe's um, on sale. I caught a pretty good sale. It was just on, it was, you know, $9.99, $99, $1,000. For this uh, fancy induction range upgraded from that coil stove so this feels I mean this feels like an upgrade it's the first thing you see is it's beautiful I mean I think it's this nice shiny glass top although you can see I've been using it one of the things I'm gonna be struggling with I'm sure is smudges <clears throat> on this glass top something that, that the other glass top stoves have a problem with too I think I just haven't quite worked out how to solve it yet I think I need to buy some of that um, glass top cleaner. I uh, started using Windex and then I read in the manual that you're not supposed to do that because the ammonia in the Windex might uh, damage the surface over time. Um, but I mean it's it's sleek. I, I really love the way it looks. I like the knobs being in the front. Just looks like a high quality piece of equipment to me. Um, I did add these little trim strips just just because just because I was sick of uh, seeing crumbs drop between my countertops. The one thing I do miss is the back. I mean, on my old range that had this tall back and I could set all my spices up here, so I made this uh, shelf. I'm just letting the adhesive tape cure a little bit. Hopefully I can store some spices up there. Um, the other thing that kind of concerns me a little bit that I didn't really think about is that back here um, is a fan. There's an exhaust fan back here that runs when you turn the oven on or even when you're using the burners. Um, the air coming out, it's warm, it's it's fine, it's not hot. I mean, my other, my coil range had a little exhaust port right under the back burner here that would let air come out of the oven, and it would get hot. Like, you couldn't, actually, I melted some uh, pot, some plastic pot lids on that thing at one point. Um, so this is still an upgrade, but I worry that, you know, this is right on the surface. Like, what happens if I spill some water or drip some oil or drop food down that vent? not really sure. It looks like when I was putting this thing together you can take that whole assembly off so I guess I could take it off and clean it. Hoping that doesn't happen. I'm gonna to try to keep it from happening. Um, yeah so some of the basic features um, it's got more features on the keypad here than uh, my old oven did obviously. I think that I'm really gonna like the uh, bread proof and the keep warm function. I used to have to like turn my oven on to one you know and toggle the temperature down to 160 here. You can just hit keep warm go and it sets it to 175 automatically. Um, the touchscreen is very sensitive. That's something that I've been struggling with. If you lean up against it while you're cooking you can accidentally hit the touchscreen buttons. Um, it does have uh, smart control. Um, I did I hooked it up. I honestly I find it pretty much useless. Um, I would use it for preheating but it's uh, you have to activate the smart control with the smart control button, and it deactivates itself um, every 12 or 24 hours, something like that. So, I mean, how often are you preheating your oven? Like, if I'm going to walk over here and hit the smart control button and then tell Alexa, preheat the oven to 400 degrees. Preheating oven to 400 degrees Fahrenheit for convection baking. Like... If I have to walk over and push the button, I'm just going to push the button to set the oven to preheat. Um, it is kind of nice because you can uh, tell it to turn the oven light on, maybe while you have gloves on or something. Alexa, turn on the oven light. I mean, it's fine. I, I wish that I could just leave the smart control on all the time. I dug through the manual and I can't find a way to do it. It's probably a safety feature. But it kind of makes the smart control useless. Well, it is what it is. Um, the other thing that I really like about this is uh, the child lock. So if you hold this button in for three seconds, it locks the whole keypad. You can't turn on the cooktop. Not that it matters much because the cooktop doesn't get hot unless you have a pan on it like I do here. Um, when you try to turn it on, it gives you these lock symbols. Um, but cooler, and I didn't realize, not only does it lock the touchpads, it also locks the oven door. Like you, 
There must be a magnetic lock for the self-cleaning function. I haven't actually looked into the self-cleaning yet. Um, but yeah, like they can't even open the oven door, which is great. Um, I did install the anti-tip mechanism that came with this thing. You just screw a little bracket onto the floor back there, and it catches one of the legs. But I mean, they can't even open it when it's locked, which is great. Because I do have two young kids that like to push buttons. Has these couple of self-cleaning features. I haven't really looked at them very closely. Um, honestly, with the old stove, I didn't do much cleaning of the oven, pretty much ever. Um, I just kind of let it get dirty. But I'll try the steam clean and the self clean. I'm assuming I have to add some, like a pot of water for the steam clean. I have not tried it yet. Um, so let's talk a bit about performance. I did record um, a couple of videos, which I'll play at the end here if you're interested in watching them. But this thing, I mean, the thing that you hear about is that these induction uh, cooktops boil water ridiculously fast. And it's definitely true. So my test, I boiled two cups of uh, room temperature water on... Um, my old electric, you know, coil range on an Ikea uh, tabletop induction burner that I've been using. And on this, uh, the coil range boiled in 3 minutes 38 seconds. Roughly, it's hard to tell exactly when something starts boiling, but once it came to a rolling boil, I think I was pretty generous with that time, actually. Um, the Ikea hot plate took 2 minutes 30 seconds, and this range um, on this burner, um, not the big burner because I was using a, a smaller pot. I think it was an 8-inch pot. Um, took a minute 50. So saves me 40 seconds boiling over the IKEA hot plate and uh, you know a whole almost a full two minutes on on the two cups of water boiling on the old coil stove. Um, it's it's impressively fast. Like I, I used to, to set up my pot of water to boil and go start prepping my stuff, you know, chopping vegetables husking corn. It's sweet corn season here in Pennsylvania. Um, and I, I really can't do it anymore because it boils the water too fast and I, I can't beat it. Um, even my big pot of water for sweet corn boiled in just over five minutes. And I I am not quick enough to husk a uh, dozen ears of sweet corn in five minutes. So I had to turn it off until I was done. Um, it, uh, it sears really well. I have a video of me searing a tuna steak, which I'll also add to the video. Um, I was worried that it would, the IKEA induction um, plate tends to, uh, it overheats really easily. It'll shut itself off when you get it too hot. I seared a tuna steak on this burner um, on a cast iron skillet and it it didn't seem to have a problem. I mean it seared really nicely. Uh, I didn't hear like any crazy fans kicking on. Um, it doesn't seem to be like it's going to be an issue. Um, this burner it's got an 11 inch ring um, and it does heat the whole bottom of my 12 inch skillet minus you know a little maybe quarter inch ring around the edge so I suspect that the actual inductor on this big burner is probably more like you know nine ish 10 inches in diameter I don't think it heats all the way out to this line but it gets pretty close it's definitely fine for a 12 inch skillet you're not going to have any complaints there. If you have a 14 inch skillet, you might notice the pan getting hotter in the middle, you know, than the edges, but I, I don't know one of those, so it's not a problem for me. Um, I find that these burners, my goodness, my thumb, I find that these burners um, are adequate for a 10 inch skillet. Here's my 10 inch cast iron skillet. And just for sake of argument here, I'm going to turn it on. Um, all these burners have a boost setting. If you turn them from off directly to 9, you'll get this P on the uh, stovetop. This is power boost. It'll run extra power to these elements for um, a few minutes. Uh, it'll, it'll eventually just switch it back to 9. But you can see that was not very long. It's already pretty hot. Um, if you look, we're definitely boiling in the center. The very edge is not boiling yet. But, you know, cast iron transfers heat pretty well. And I just let it heat up for a little bit. You can see we're starting to get all the way out to the edge. Um, you know, so you can tell that this inductor is not quite the whole size of the bottom of the pan. But I find that in practice, it's plenty. It's big enough for it to cook comfortably in a 10-inch skillet. 
that's one thing that kind of limits you with these induction burners, I think, is that they really do, like, on the Ikea plate, the center is, the burn, yeah, the inductor is about six inches, and you can tell where it ends because you have a very stark line between browning and not cooking at all. Um, but I find, I think these are going to be fine. I, I only ever used one 12-inch skillet at a time. If I need another 10-inch skillet, I mean, you can run two of them here, plus a little pot on the smallest, the smallest burner there. Um, I also found that noise uh, was better on this on this uh, range than it was on the IKEA hot plate. That IKEA one had a a fan that was constantly blowing. I'm gonna throw some water on here just so you can hear the noise um, loudly, and you can. The fan is actually running on this thing right now because the burner is a little bit hot. And you can hear it. I mean, it's it's there. There's also this little bit of a chirping kind of noise that I think is coming from the fan motor also, which might annoy some people. I don't think it's going to bother me. Um, but these uh, stainless pans that I have are, you know, they have the thick bottom that's aluminum and copper. And on the IKEA... Uh, cooktop. They have this horrible high-pitched rattling sound. Um, hopefully that's coming across for you. There is a little bit of a rattling, whistly kind of sound. It's less whistly though. It's, it's much less offensive to my ear than it was on the uh, IKEA hot plate. Um, it's there. Uh, it's not as pronounced with with uh, cast iron or, or carbon steel, but these laminated bottom pots, it does make a noise. Um, if you're very sensitive to noises, it might annoy you. Um, I, I've i gotten used to it with that IKEA hot plate and this sound, and this sound doesn't bother me at all. And <laughs> you're blowing that water already, it's pretty quick. Um, the other sound that it does make is if you have the burner on its lowest setting, you'll hear the inductor kicking on and off. Let's see if you can hear it. hear this clicking so if you're I, I think that if I was gonna simmer something on one two or I think even up to three it kicks on and off yeah and then once you go to four it's constantly on if I was gonna simmer something on three for a long time for hours that ticking might get on my nerves um, once you get up to to three or four um, the sound of the boiling water completely covers that ticking sound. Um, but at a low setting, if it was just barely simmering, might be annoying. Um, I, I am not going to complain about it. I'm happy with, with the amount of noise that this thing makes compared to that IKEA plate for sure. And I mean, even the coil range had a little bit of clicking from expanding and contracting. Um, I'm not a baker, so I haven't used the oven a whole lot. I did bake some cookies, um, and I found that uh, my wife thinks that it might cook a little bit on the hot side, or maybe our old oven cooked a little on the cool side, but some of her recipes came out a bit too brown on the top, even when she cooked them at the lowest setting. Um, my cookies came out great, um, very even. There's a ton of space in this thing compared to the old one, and actually the window... Um, the viewing window is gigantic compared to our old our old uh, range. So, I mean, I'm really pleased with that. The other thing I really like is this drawer. Um, our other stove had a drawer. This one actually fits our baking sheets side by side instead of just in a single layer. Uh, it's a little bit wider than our old one was. But nicer, the nicest thing is that it's actually on a nice um, drawer glide here. So I'm not I'm not fighting with this one. It's on a mechanical glide that slides nice and smooth. Um, overall, I would say I I'm definitely happy with it at this point. I've been cooking with it for um, about two weeks now. Um, it's quick. It's quiet. It heats up fast. It cools down fast. Um, I mean, this burner was boiling, and I'm not going to start a fire on that thing. On that old coil range, this thing would probably light a piece of paper on fire, you know, burn my hand at this point. It's hot. I wouldn't want to keep my hand there, but it's not it's not burning hot. It's great. Um, 
I'll attach I'll attach some of those boiling water videos to the end of this uh, video. You can see the um, IKEA hot plate in action in case you're interested in one of those. Um, I definitely don't think that this is at all comparable to one of those little tabletop hot plates. So don't think that if you buy one of those, you're going to know what induction is about because this is definitely this is definitely better.